But then we have the allowance account. It's now going down to 21,000 because that's where we wrote off the people that we have determined that would be uncollectible. No effect on bad debt expense, no effect on the income statement from writing off these accounts thus far. Next one, we're gonna say receive payment from CW after writing it off. So this is that unusual one. It doesn't happen all that often in real life. We're gonna first take a look at the direct write-off method. This is a really good example problem though because it allows us to see the difference between the two methods and what would happen if we, if we had to reverse a, a write-off. And so it makes us think kind of backwards, which is great for testing and, and our knowledge on this type of stuff. So we wrote CW off. We said, hey, they're not gonna pay us the 9,000. And then they came in even without our collection actions. We gave up collecting the money. They came in and paid us and that's great. So you would think that we would debit cash and credit some other account. We couldn't credit accounts receivable because we already wrote it off. We wrote it off in this case under the direct write-off method to bad debt. So you would think we can just debit cash and credit bad debt. But if we did so, we wouldn't have it run through the receivable account. And if we looked at the, at the receivable subsidiary ledger, it looks like this 9,000 is due to them not paying us. And we want to show that they did pay us. And therefore under either method, we do need to reverse what we did prior to give us a paper trail that this client is good. So therefore we're gonna reverse what we did last time under the direct write-off method. We uh, credited accounts receivable and we debited bad debt. We're gonna reverse that going to put them back on the books, increasing the accounts receivable by the 9,000, decreasing bad debt. Unusual account here, bad debt and expense typically only going up with debits. This is an exception to the rule. We are reversing it under the direct write-off method. This being the difference between the allowance and direct write-off under the allowance method, this would be the allowance for doubtful accounts account. Once we do that, then we can just do our normal transaction that would happen if a company came in and paid us on account. Debiting the checking account, increasing the checking account, crediting accounts receivable, decreasing accounts receivable. Note between these two journal entries, here's accounts receivable, here's accounts receivable, debit, credit, doing the same thing. If we eliminate those two, we're left with a debit to the checking account, credit to bad debt. So we could shorten this from just a technical standpoint to just this with one journal entry but that doesn't give us a good paper trail therefore we don't do that so if we post this then we're going to say accounts receivable is going to go back up by the 9,000 to this and then we're going to say that the bad debt is going to go down here's the 9,000 here we're now eliminating it and that brings us to the 10,000 down from 19 and then we have the cash account, which is going to go from uh, 120 up by the 9,000 to uh, 129,000. And